Hi there. One of the uh, least talked about aspects of lockdown that we've all experienced is what I'm going to call COVID-19 guilt. And Christianity, in a very real way, has been the foundation of much of the modern health system. For most of the past 1,000 years, hospitals have been run by, by monks and nuns in monasteries. Traditionally, nurses in the UK were called sisters due to the fact that so many who had occupied that sort of role previously had been nuns. In France, at the turn of the 20th century, the country's 1,500 hospitals were operated by 15,000 nuns, representing over 200 various religious orders. In Matthew 25, Jesus reveals to us what will happen on Judgment Day when he will separate the sheep from the goats. He says in verse 35, For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. He adds, I tell you the truth, what you did for even the least of these of my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. And Jesus in Matthew seven twenty one says, Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who actually do the will of my Father will enter. And these passages are the sort of passages that when we come across can cause us COVID-19 guilt. We can feel guilty that we're not doing enough, that perhaps we've abandoned our posts, that we're cowards because we're hiding away from those who are suffering and in need of our love and care. In 1855, Spurgeon, the, the Victorian preacher, said, uh, Who is the man who does not fear to die? I will tell you, that man is a believer. Fear to die? Thank God I do not. The cholera may come again next summer. I pray to God it may not. But if it does, it matters not to me. I will toil and visit the sick by day and by, by night and by day until I drop. And if it takes me, sudden death is sudden glory. And our time in 1855 are very different. 1855, people still believe that bad smells are what cause disease. Spurgeon himself, uh, in preventing cholera, wrote, the gospel has no quarrel with ventilation. Uh, it's not until the late 19th century with Pasteur, with Koch and with Lister, that germ theory becomes popular, it becomes accepted. In the 1850s, it's before the era of telephones, of Zoom, of video chat, of YouTube and FaceTime. If you wanted to encourage a sick or a dying believer, you, you have to go and visit them. Hospitals as they exist today also did not exist. Spurgeon admits, however, I gave myself up with a, a youthful ardour to the visitation of the sick, and I was sent uh, from all the corners of the district by persons of all ranks and religions. But soon I became weary in body, sick at heart. My friends seemed to be falling one by one, and I felt or fancied that I was sickening like those around me. A little more work and weeping would have laid me low among the rest. I felt that my burden was heavier than I could bear, and I was ready to sink under it. Uh, one... You can see the state of his heart there. You know, he's just wore himself out ragged trying to go around and minister to people. One Catholic priest in Italy wrote that in order to visit the COVID-19 dying, he's been required to wear two layers of gowns, a mask, a visor, disposable shoe covers just to perform the last rites. We now know about viruses and about bacteria. We don't need to visit people physically in order to comfort, build up and encourage one another. We've got telephones, we've got Zooms, we've got YouTube, we've got a variety of approaches yeah, or tools in our toolkit that we can use today. Visiting people house to house in times and place would be a complete violation of Romans 13. John uh, Paul writes, everyone must submit to governing authorities for all authority comes from God. And those who in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority uh, is rebelling against God, what God has instituted and they will be punished. So keeping ourselves isolated, if that's what the government recommends, and you know, over this winter period, that definitely might what be it recommends in some, some places and in some times, um, is in keeping with the greatest commandment from Mark 12, 30 to 31. Love your neighbour as yourself.
we isolate in order to protect our neighbors we know about viruses we, we know about germs now we, we know about bacteria they didn't know that in Spurgeon's day but we know now what causes it it's not bad smells or anything else it is a virus one uh, mega church in South Korea was identified as a super spreader of the virus there because they chose not to obey the rules um, we need to keep the main thing the main thing whatever we do let us love our neighbors by telling them about Jesus uh, churches in Wuhan in China for example distributed free mass to their neighbors told them about Jesus and were people of hope online friends we can do the same let us be people of hope who point people ever towards the source of all hope our Lord Jesus Christ